Home studio producers, typically speaking, believe a lot of very untrue things. And it's not your fault. The world of music producers is global. It's not just in LA or Nashville. So building relationships with other music producers is something most home studio producers have not done or don't do. So this means a lot of home studio producers get their information from YouTube. And I do have to take a second and acknowledge that this video is also on YouTube, so we can appreciate some irony there. But the problem is there is a lot of really bad information on YouTube that leads a lot of home studio producers to believe a bunch of lies and myths about producers and producing music. And I wanna call them out so you can be aware of them and hopefully avoid believing some of them. Number one, you have to make hit songs to be a real producer. The reality is that there are millions of producers making a living that you have never heard of who are very happy with their careers and know a lot and are making killer music. I have never made a hit song. I have worked with hit producers and writers. I've been able to be a part of some really amazing productions, but I myself have not made a hit song. I'm not an award-winning producer yet. I do this full time and tons of others do as well. I get comments like, what hits have you made? Or what big artists have you produced? As if me not having a hit or working with mainstream artists means I'm not a legitimate music producer. So just think about how stupid that is for two milliseconds. A real producer is someone who is producing music. Now, obviously a professional music producer is someone who produces music and makes money doing it. It's very weird that people somehow only associate professional producers with hit producers. It's really dumb. I've done everything from producing artists to producing for film and even done a bunch of composing for orchestra and choir. I've been commissioned for big orchestral projects and all of that has been paid work. Heck, just last week, I landed a major brand commercial that'll be on television. So yeah, I'm actually doing this stuff. And you need to realize that the music industry is a lot bigger than just Justin Bieber or Charlie Puth or other mainstream artists. There are millions of artists, production houses, companies and licensing libraries who are hiring people like me who are independent producers that you may have never heard of. I don't work with record labels because I don't want to, not that I can't. Most of my colleagues are not famous producers, yet they put food on the table with their music and many of them make six figures or more. So stop looking at the top 1% of the top 1% of producers as the norm. It's not. Most professional producers are not famous and are not working with famous artists. The independent market is much, much bigger than the label market. And this also ties into your own value. If you produce music, then you're a music producer and you don't magically become one after working with XYZ artists that gives you credibility. You making killer music is what makes you a producer. You making money is what makes you a professional. Line number two, you need fancy gear and fancy plugins to make great music. I've talked about this a lot and I know I probably sound like a broken record to people who watch my videos, but it is 1000% true. I'm not anti-gear, I'm not anti-plugins. I even own analog gear. I have a lot of plugins, but in my experience, those things are practically useless if you cannot already make killer music. Gear is nothing more than a tool in creating music. So if you cannot already create amazing music, then your gear is useless. Like you can go buy all the gear in the world. You can go build that million dollar studio but you put someone in the producer's chair who doesn't know what they're doing and can't make magic happen with their music, then guess what? It's basically like having a bunch of useless gear around you. I think you'd be amazed at how much music is out there that was produced in a home studio with very minimal equipment and minimal plugins. Most of the music that's being licensed on television is being done by independent producers who oftentimes are not working with big studios and are working out of a very modest home studio setup. And by the way, for clarification, when I talk about gear and plugins, I'm primarily talking about effects plugins, not so much on sample libraries. I see these as two different things because I am actually a big advocate for getting access to new sounds. Lie number three. Mixing will save you. Mixing is the final part of the process in making a production. It is the last piece. If your music doesn't already sound awesome before mixing, you made a lot of mistakes way earlier on in the process. Now again, I talk about this a lot on this channel and I do so because it's such a big lie that producers believe in saying it over and over is sometimes what it takes to help people realize how big of a deal this is. Mixing is about polishing what is already beautiful. If what you are working with is not already beautiful, then you have a very serious problem. And any professional mixing engineer will tell you this. They cannot effectively do their job unless you do yours at a high level first. A top tier mixing engineer will send back a production if it's not ready for them to do their job, or <laughs> let's be honest, they'll probably just turn down the job. That's the marker of a good mixing engineer. They're not going to mix garbage. Garbage in, garbage out. Line number four, there's no money for music producers. And again, this is so ridiculous. In fact, I would argue that there's far more money for music producers than almost any other trade in the music business. And the reason is simple. Producers are the ones who build 
the master. The master is the final product, the recording, the wave file of the song in produced form. We make that, and that is the asset that is used to go out and actually make money for artists, make money for record labels, for publishers, for literally everyone. The master is the breadwinner. It is the thing that goes out and makes money. In other words, our trade is the most sought after part of the puzzle and is arguably also the most difficult piece of the puzzle, which means if you can do this and do it very well, there's very good money in it. And I see so many producers charging like $300 a song or less. That is so undervaluing your worth. Obviously, if you're just getting started, Started, like you're, you're totally new at this thing. Yeah, you gotta start somewhere. But myself and other producers I'm friends with, we're charging between two and five thousand dollars a song. And if you're writing music and producing music for commercial use, like advertising and licensing for television, it can be very, very lucrative. I'm not legally allowed to disclose what this commercial paid me that I just landed, but it would probably make you spit out your water for literally 30 seconds of music. And that's something that I'm getting into more right now. And if you land a spot for a commercial, you can make thousands of dollars and even tens of thousands of dollars from one good placement. And then you also get performance royalties on the back end, which can make up a, you know, a decent amount of money too, unless it's a buyout, which will have a higher front end free. So whether you want to produce artists or make music for licensing or commercials, there is so much opportunity for producers that artists and other musicians simply don't have the ability to get involved in without having to link up with a person who is a producer. Musical recordings are worth a huge amount, and producers are the ones who create those recordings. And you probably know this, it's really hard to do it well. So if you do it well, then you can make some really good money doing it. And you do not need to live in Nashville or LA to do this. This is increasingly becoming remote, and it was going remote well before COVID, by the way. Like, I've been doing this YouTube channel since 2016. I don't live in Nashville or LA, I live in the Midwest. And when I was doing more client work for artists, it was almost exclusively remote work. I've had clients in the US, and I've had clients in completely different countries. Now this isn't a video on how to do this, nor is that something that I really want to delve into for this channel, but if you want to learn how to do this stuff, I really recommend Dan Grimmett from Dark Label. He has more producer success stories than just about anyone helping producers land more artist clients. And if you're interested in like the television side of things, like commercials specifically, Tommy Z is crushing it, helping producers learn how to make a career making music for brands. I believe his program in Academy is called Making Music for Brands. So there are people out there teaching this stuff, and there's a huge amount of opportunity out there. Home studio producers don't think they can make a living from their house. And friends, I've built the career of my dreams in my home, living in basically the middle of nowhere. I get to make music and make these videos for a living. I've built relationships with some of the biggest brands in the music industry from my home. So the idea that you have to have a commercial studio or live in Nashville is just insane. There are more professional producers not in Nashville than in Nashville. And ironically, a lot of the producers in Nashville are home studio producers. Line number five, the belief that you can't produce music really fast. I think this is a really important one and not something I'd really see a whole lot of other people talking about on YouTube, but I do live streams on this channel where I'll produce uh, the better part of an entire production live in a couple hours. And I have people watching who just can't understand how I produce so quickly. And I get this question a lot during those streams. How are you producing so fast? Like so many producers believe that making a song takes weeks and insane amounts of labor and headaches, but the reality is that the best producers are usually working at breakneck speed. And as a side note, if you wanna do this as a career, you have to produce fast or you won't make it. You cannot make a living only producing a few songs a month. In most cases, you're more likely gonna be producing a few songs per week if you want a career. But even for hobbyists, there's this weird belief that making a full production takes an insane amount of time and you can't do it super fast. In a typical production for me, depending on the scale, I'm usually gonna get about 80% of a production done in one day. The other 20% I'm gonna do over the course of a few days, and usually that's to allow my ears to reset uh, with a couple nights of sleep. And I'm also working on other productions at the same time. So at any given time, I have five to eight songs I'm working on, and I'm finishing songs along the way. And for commercial scoring, by the way, you might get like a day or two to write and fully produce those. It's like a requirement to be able to work very fast. And if you don't believe me, again, I literally document producing music in live streams. So there's like well-documented proof on on this channel of me working quickly like that. In some of these streams, I've literally written and produced almost entire songs in one sitting. And this isn't some like, you know, pat on the back, but I'm trying to help you understand that most producers have incredibly limiting beliefs about how quickly they can work. Now, obviously this is a pretty deep subject that may warrant a whole video, but you probably are wasting so many hours every production if it's taking you so long to finish. The majority of the time I see people taking forever to make something, it's because time is being wasted on stupid stuff that does not matter. Like when I'm producing, I'm focusing on the things that will make the biggest difference first, and then I hold off on the details till a little bit later when I can get super meticulous and focus on those and focus hard so I am getting stuff done fast. An exercise that I've suggested not only to friends of mine but to students is to set a timer for one hour and get as much done as humanly possible before the time is up. And you'll be amazed as to how much you can
shouldn't get done when you stop worrying about the stupid stuff that only makes a 1% difference. And I'm gonna be sharing a video on this channel where I wrote and produced a song from start to finish in one day. And by the way, that's including the final mix and master. I documented it to show you that this is possible and you can get commercial quality while working at a very fast pace. The amount of time you spend on something does not have anything to do with how it will be received or its quality. It's the end result that matters and nothing more. You spending 40 hours in a song or spending eight hours in a song will almost always be such a small difference that the average listener won't even be able to tell. And by the way, I'm not advocating for being lazy or advocating for rushing either. There are productions that have taken me enormous amounts of time. And I'm not gonna say that, you know, there aren't songs that take more time to flesh out or songs that started years ago that I come back to years later, but those are outliers. That's not the norm. The whole point here is that if you believe you cannot make musical magic quickly, then you will likely waste huge amounts of time. Stop believing that and start working on music faster. The irony of it all too, is that when you do this, you will also likely learn 10 times faster than you thought was possible. And speaking of learning faster, if you do wanna learn faster and be able to make music faster, I have a video right here that you need to check out. It's helped already tens of thousands of people learn how to produce faster. I'll see you in that video.